Okay, shall we get started? <clears throat> okay, so uh, the first speaker today is Olga Posnova, and she's going to talk about skew hole duality and limit shape of young diagrams for classical Lie groups. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for uh, making uh, this talk possible. Uh, so I'm really happy to be here in Florence now, and I'm so happy that all of it took place. Okay, this um, uh, the title of my talk is "Skew How Duality and uh, Limit Shapes of Young Diagrams." So, uh, so as based on the name of this talk. It, it, you can see that, of course, there is some representation theoretic part as uh, uh, to this talk, and also there is some uh, limit shape phenomenon. So today I would uh, like to uh, introduce a little bit what SQ how duality is, and uh, just the regular how duality, which uh, probably all of you know, and then go to SQ how duality. Uh, and this is a joint work with Anton Nazarov and uh, Travis Scrimshaw. And, uh, the talk that today's talk is based on based on our archive preprint of this number. Okay, so um, firstly, I would like to say what is uh, how do I, okay of course uh, is well, we we are having the dual pairs of Lie groups. Uh, I will show you just on the GL and GLK case, but later uh, on, uh, we'll proceed to other dual pairs of Lie groups. Uh, firstly, you can consider a symmetric al algebra of this space, and this CN and CK uh, could be seen as the standard representations of the GLN and GLK. So the symmetric skew how duality. Uh, says that th there is a decomposition which is a multiplicity free for uh, such a module. So this thing could be considered as a module on the direct product. And so the skew how geology tells us that it decomposes without multiplicities. And there is also the skew how geology where we consider the skew symmetric algebra, the exterior algebra. So again, consider a tensor product of the spaces and the space could be regarded, this whole exterior algebra could be regarded as a GLN uh, times GLK module. So, okay, sorry for that. This is just <laughs> a little extra equality sign, but yeah, we have uh, the same idea here. So, uh, yeah, that's correct because I will show you just a little bit later uh, the picture of what is lambda bar prime. Okay, so we can see that uh, this caudality could be, this module could be viewed as GLN, and then we can consider just a GLN module, the exterior algebra of the standard representation, and then to the tensor power K. So then the skew how duality tells us that it decomposes with the following multiplicities into reducible GLN modules. And the uh, multiplicities are the dimension of the GLK uh, modules, which are parameterized by lambda bar prime. So what is a lambda bar prime? Here we sum of, uh, over lambda, lambdas, which are in the n times k, uh, uh, how to say, shape. So basically, here's the exterior algebra. So this is the sum of the vertical columns, then we uh, multiply it to the power K. Then the diagrams which appear in this decomposition, they should fit inside the N times K rectangle. So if here is lambda, which is colored by the gray, then, uh, uh, so, uh, then the lambda uh, prime is this one which is just turning. And the lambda bar prime is just this diagram, which we just consider like this. Only, only, yeah, this is some of unusual notation because I, I have put the longest row in the bottom, uh, but it's still, so it's a conjugate transposed diagram. Uh, so for the next, uh, so 10 or 15 minutes, the idea will be like that. Okay, what we can do with this dimension, how, 
can we express it via the row uh, lengths of lambda? Because if we do so, uh, the, it will be great. And it will also be great for the probability measures we can, uh, we will be able to introduce later and then calculate the limit shape. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and yeah, by the way, I should say that uh, also the uh, limit shape phenomena is known for the, not the, for the whole exterior algebra, but for the uh, one of its graded components, uh, the exterior power P. And this is, uh, uh, was, this was considered by Sniade and Panova in the uh, 2018. So here, this duality looks like that. I will come to this a little bit later, because as you see, as you all know, this is uh, the uh, rated component. And then when we'll be talking about the limit shape phenomena, those results will be also connected with the results of Sniade Panova. Okay, yeah. Um, and what, uh, but when we started uh, all this research, uh, what interested us uh, was basically the other dual pairs of Lie groups. Uh, because, well, can I use a board, uh, a chalkboard for, 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 for a little bit, maybe? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, um, so before all, all that idea was skew how GLT started, we uh, found out one interesting phenomenon. For example, if we considered the SO5, the algebra, and then we looked at the fundamental module with the, which was the last fundamental module, here is four dimensional. So when we multiplied it to the tensor power K, then it, the multiplicities were appearing to be uh, of a really nice shape. So they were, the formulas were factorizable and they were expressed uh, in, in terms of a product formula. So, and this problem was a little bit uh, uh, unknown for us before. So the representation theoretic explanation of this phenomena uh, wasn't clear to us. But later, um, uh, so we were pointed out to the idea that actually, if we consider the exterior algebra of the standard representation, okay, I can, <laughs> I can show. Okay, the standard representation of SO5 is this, okay? It's five dimensional. Then if we consider the exterior algebra uh, of this, uh, the, its, its dimension will be two to the n. So dimension two to the n, uh, so it will be 32. And then very interesting thing, we found out that, okay, now we take the exterior algebra and what is this? This is V, then, uh, it basically decomposes into one uh, plus five. Okay, I will, I will write in the dimension, but uh, then later I will show the diagrams, okay? So basically it decomposes like this. So this is V, this is the uh, second exterior power, this is the third exterior power and so on. So on this picture, you can see what is this? This is this five dimensional uh, represent, representation. Okay, I didn't draw it here. I will draw it here, five dimensional. Then the 10 dimensional is this with additional one zero. And this one is trivial. So like this, and this whole is multiplied by two. Okay, and it's very easy to see that if we have, if we take the spinner representation, this four dimensional, and we take it to the tensor square, it will be uh, half of this decomposition. So it decomposes one plus five plus 10. So, and actually this phenomena of nice 
multipl factorizable multiplicities is in this decomposition turned out to be related uh, basically to the exterior algebra. So if we multiply this to the power k, it's the same as we will multiply this uh, to the power to k. And there, here's uh, like in case of dimensions, here's uh, some factor of two, which because in case of the dimensions we calculate, we will, we will introduce extra extra of two, factor of two. So again, this thing is the exterior algebra of v, and it uh, it also could be uh, represented uh, via the uh, tensor uh, second uh, tensor product. Okay, so okay, so okay, maybe I could write like this. Maybe <laughs> it's uh, v omega one and then v omega two squared. Okay, this two means that it's. Uh, the tensor square of the uh, second fundamental representation of SO5 uh, uh, is basically could be expressed uh, through the uh, exterior, uh, half of the exterior algebra. Okay. So, uh, sorry? Yes, 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 yes. The, 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 that is the thing. So yeah, okay. I mean, uh, the, the representations could be depicted uh, as the uh, diagrams, way diagrams of the representations. So and uh, uh, of course, uh, so the representations would correspond to uh, the same uh, way diagrams. Uh, they are isomorphic. Okay. So yeah, here here was uh, okay. But basically that is what we are doing here. So we found out this phenomenon is related to the uh, and uh, following the articles of how also the articles of uh, Ribnikov, we uh, studied the dual pairs of the following the groups, uh, SP, SP2L, SP2K. So why, why, why did I change it? Okay, for the 2L, that's important because um, Later, uh, we will uh, show that the limit shapes for the, those dual pairs of Lie groups, they fill in, fit inside the limit shape of the GL. So here, 2L is uh, basically L. But okay, later I will, I, I will use the L notation. Okay, so those are the following pairs of Lie groups. And this uh, pair, the last pair, so 2L plus 1 pin 2K, is basically the same example as I showed you. I will, uh, we'll, we'll come to that later. Okay, so for SP to LSP to K, we will consider a mu, which is C uh, of the even uh, dimension to, to L. And then uh, this uh, standard module decomposes into two components, V plus and V minus, the isotropic subspaces. And then, the, then there is the following decompositions uh, corresponding to how reality. And then we can see that following the idea of decomposing tensor powers, which we would like to do, is that we decompose it into reproducibles. And here we have the dimension of the dual uh, Lie algebra uh, representation. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And there is another pairs of the groups. The, the, the example which I showed you. Okay, so V is this standard representation, which in our example was five dimensional. And here, uh, on the other hand, we can see that this V decomposes uh, into this components. And we can say that the exterior algebra of V it could be expressed via the exterior algebras of each components and then is isomorphic to the uh, the uh, tensor square of the uh, sec uh, last fundamental representation. So we can decompose the uh, even tensor power of the last fundamental representation into reducibles with a certain factor of two, which appears, and also the multiplicities will be the dimensions. And also series. Uh, the exterior algebra, which is basically 
uh, well, the sum of the uh, last fundamental module and uh, the fundamental module, which is also before before last, I don't know. And this uh, to the tensor power two k is the same as the exterior algebra to the power k. Okay. So in case for the D series, this is not just one fundamental representation, uh, but the sum of two fundamental representation. And this, we are thank thankful for this fact. This fact was uh, pointed to us by Tingo. Uh, so uh, th that's uh, basically the whole idea of Q duality for dual pairs of groups, but this was known already for a long time. What, uh, yeah, and yeah, that is what is also uh, some common knowledge, which I would like just to remind you that <clears throat> in case of the sure bio duality, uh, we can introduce the measure on the Young diagrams on the following case, because here will be the dimensions of the symmetric group, dimension of the GLN, and then this all could be expressed using the length of the row of the diagram lambda, and then in the limit where k and n uh, basically are proportional, we get the famous version of logan shape limit shape. So basically, what we would like to do is do the same thing but for other pairs, dual pairs of Lie groups. And one interesting fact is also, if we consider that the K and uh, so that K over S squared is constant, then we see that the limit shapes depends on the ratio. And that is also one interesting phenomenon. Uh, what, we would what I would like to point out is that this result is also related to the RSK algorithm. So, we can make a correspondence between the vectors of the standard representations and with, to, with the i box. And then if we have the k tensor power uh, using the RSK algorithm, it will correspond to the pair of semi-standard Young tableau uh, with no more than uh, k rows, and that's the of shape lambda. Okay, so I would like to go to the skew how duality using the other uh, RSK. So, what uh, the first question, what is the RSK related to skew how duality? So, the answer is that it is dual RSK, which is also known. And maybe I can just show so we can have a matrix of zeros and ones. It's basically this uh, tells us uh, the, uh, what, what basis do we have in the exterior power. Sure, because in the tensor product of Cn and Ck, uh, we have the following basis vectors, okay? And if we would like to take the exterior algebra, then uh, we will see that, okay, those vectors are the basis vectors. And then this I1, J, J, I, I1, J1 is this position of one, then this position. Okay, so we basically can say that this parameterizes the basis vector. And also then we can show that uh, it could be also written as a two row array by uh, just looking at the positions of these ones, because this is one, one position, one, two, or three, two, two, or corresponds to this one. So that's pretty clear. So, but what's important that we will apply the dual RSK uh, because, yeah, maybe <laughs> that's a small picture which I wanted to show uh, how it bumps out because of the difference between uh, dual RSK and RSK that we can bump uh, uh, the boxes with the equal entries down. So if we have, well, using this idea, we take the lowest uh, row and then we just uh, stick them together until until the following appears. So basically at the first, when the two appears, uh, this two uh, goes here and then it bumps, uh, bumps out another one. Okay, so basically with this algorithm, okay, this is just, I don't know, something, so, some P which, which is, uh, I don't, probably, sorry, this is my mistake. But what I would like to say is that we have a pair of the semi-standard Young tableau Okay, of shape lambda and of a shape uh, a lambda prime. Okay, and in this case, it's very clear that after applying the dual RSK, we can see that we'll have the measure on the pairs of Young diagrams. 
uh, lambda and lambda prime. Okay. So uh, those are the same kinds of measures which we can also construct for the other dual pairs of Lie groups. I won't be uh, just focusing on that right now because I don't have too much time. Uh, but only that I can say that if we want to do some asymptotic analysis, we have to have the formulas for dimension of the lambda bar prime in terms of the row length of lambda. Okay, uh, and this procedure is probably also known to everybody. Uh, is that we can make uh, a one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay, of course, but firstly, we know that we can express the dimension of uh, the uh, module corresponding to lambda bar prime in terms of the semi-standard Young tableau. So the numbers of the, the number semi-standard Young tableau uh, of shape lambda bar prime with uh, entries uh, to key uh, per, uh, give, give us the dimension of the corresponding GLK module. Uh, but also what's important then we can parameterize is using the GT pattern uh, where the, these are the number of boxes with the value uh, less or equal to J in the ith row of the diagram. So what this means, oh, okay, no, sorry, I, 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 pressed, I pressed the wrong button, uh, sorry. <gasps> what happened? Okay, <laughs> so that, um, Basically, uh, uh, the first okay, the first row uh, corresponds to the number of boxes with the values which uh, uh, are less or equal to uh, six in the uh, i-throw of the diagram, or to five in the i-throw of the diagram. So th those are corresponding to each rows. Okay, that is also some common knowledge, but. Uh, we could make a uh, following bijection with the paths, and that's already good news for us uh, because uh, when we'll count paths, we can use the LGV lemma, and that's some hope that we'll be able to calculate uh, those dimensions. Of course, so we'll just uh, introduce a little bit uh, tweaked uh, BIJs. So we will take the GT pattern and then we took plus j minus i, and then we will parameterize the positions of the blue row by here. So this will be a half hexagon. And here, uh, this is the new GD pattern, which is which parameterizes us the position of the blue hexagon. So here, 10 parameterizes the position of this hexagon, eight also of this. So, so basically, this first row corresponds to the uh, these uh, positions of hexagon, and then, then we'll go to the other hexagons. They are parameterized to starting from, from right to left by uh, the second row, the third row, etc. And okay, so here, here is the same thing. And also, we can note then um, those ending points of the paths which start from here, uh, they correspond to the row length, length of the GL diagram, uh, which is also useful because in that case, we are able to, the, to, to calculate um, the dimensions using the LGV lemma. So uh, basically what will calculate the number of paths from those points uh, to those points, and it's well known that it is a determinant uh, the paths are non-intersecting. We, we just also those are the lozenge stylings of the this trapezoid. Okay, and uh, but that's the the other good news is that we are able to calculate this determinant explicitly using this identity or also the Dodgson condensation the and get the product formula. So. Just the same product formula uh, looking like the one we got uh, very early on in the example of the tensor powers of the spinning representation of SO5. So this is, but this is for GL. So now this product formula tells us that we are, can express 
the dimension of the lambda bar prime or the multiplicities in the tensor power decomposition in terms of rho length of the diagram lambda. So, uh, yeah, there is another point which uh, are basically uh, those are the same paths, the same paths as, that correspond to the GT patterns uh, are, could be obtained from the young. Mm, uh, tableau losing, using the so-called column reading, or it could also be obtained uh, using the crystal basis, because this is the element of the exterior algebra. And then if you can take the first, uh, uh, first uh, boxes in, in each column, then you see that here, we are not looking at the red parts. So these three blue steps correspond to these ones. Then there is no one step, then there is a step up. And then again, two steps, one. Then goes, okay, so those rows, they correspond to this uh, tensor product of crystals. Okay, but uh, that is just example uh, that uh, it, 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 th th this could be also um, calculated using the crystal approach. Uh, the important thing is that uh, we are uh, also able to obtain the weights uh, for these paths using also the crystals approach and then go to the ideas of the Q multiplicities. So basically what we'd like to do that for the, uh, the each path, we will weight it by the Q to the, uh, to the column number. So this is the zero column number, uh, vertical column. I mean columns on this picture. And then if uh, those are vertical, I will, be, I will be weighting them by Q to the zero on the first column. Then this is, will be weighted by Q and this again to the Q to the zero. So, and this uh, again, this is, will be weighted by Q to the one and then again. Okay, so uh, basically following this idea of weighting the vertical steps in the paths by the Q to the column number, we'll be able to obtain the Q analog of multiplicities. And the Q analog of multiplicities is useful for us because because it, it is also con uh, connected with the principal specialization of the uh, sure functions. And it uh, could also be used to, to study various image shapes phenomena. So uh, here, what, what I would like to point out is that uh, they are also connected to the Q dimensions uh, by the following formula. So this Q specializations of uh, multiplicities basically are, con uh, are connected with the Q dimensions. And here are Q is a Q to this uh, power lambda uh, bar, which uh, here lambda bar is this following combinations of the row lengths of yeah. So, and also in this formula, if we set Q equal to one, of course, we'll get our multiplicities. So this is just exactly the Q analog of multiplicities, uh, which uh, will be later used to uh, study also the limit shapes in the Q case. Yeah, here is the part that may be not very useful, but it, it is also known that uh, the lozenges for uh, SP to L and SO to L correspond to the tilings of uh, such a you know, fourth fourth part uh, of the big picture. So it's a half of the half hexagon and also to the proctor patterns. And here, uh, this part is symmetric. So the for SP2L, if we want to uh, look at the tilings of the half hexagon, we will just need to take this picture and uh, reflect it to the bottom symmetrically. But if we will consider the other uh, Lie groups, then those uh, tellings uh, in the middle are a little bit tricky. So um, uh, for SL2L, the symmetry will, between top and bottom will be for all tiles except the uh, middle blue. And then for SL2L plus one, we can just have different things in the middle. But uh, this is just, uh, what I would like to say that, okay, this procedure of GL could be generalized to the other Lie algebras, Lie groups, and also the Q dimensions, uh, formulas for Q multiplicities using the Q dimensions could also be obtained using the same procedure. What is important here is this, that here we have this factor, 
which will later do something with this uh, to get the one one determinant. Uh, but uh, this is also related to the wire groups Q invariance. So just as for the non, if we set Q equal to one, we'll see that this thing is uh, anti-invariant with respect to the wild group transformation. So if A, I, and A, G parameterize us the, uh, the position of the uh, highest weight uh, on the weight diagram. So if we do a wild group reflection, then uh, the weight will change. So this, if we look at this as a function defined not only on the main wild chamber, but also on the whole uh, weight space, we'll see that this thing is Q invariant. But okay, this is also the generalization. And again, here is the paths for the series D. What is important that, uh, okay, uh, oh, sorry. I just skipped it very fast. Uh, the formulas that we have obtained, those are not the Q formulas, uh, but for all the series, uh, the multiplicities in the tensor power decomposition of the exterior al algebra, are obtained. So now we're ready to do some asymptotic analysis. So those formulas are nice project formulas, and we were fighting for that formulas, and now we are able to do something with that. Uh, okay, sorry, and not another direction. Yeah, and also some picture which puzzles a lot of people <laughs> is that um, basically we have a tiling of the hexagon, a half hexagon, and then here is another tiling of another half hexagon. And here we have this triangles. Why is this? Uh, this is because this thing corresponds to the lambda bar prime. So here, look, we have, so for, for, for this example, n is equal to five and chi, k is equal to six. So the vertical is five here, the dimensional vertical part is five and then six. And here is the other thing. The vertical line is uh, has like six boxes and then that has five. So, so we were able to glue it somehow because this is lambda and lambda bar prime and they're connected in the middle. So we're basically counting tilings of this thing and this middle part uh, symbolizes the young lambda. And, but there were a lot of questions regarding this picture because it is just some it seems a little bit strange because uh, the triangles are uh, uncommon for such uh, problems. Okay, uh, and okay. Oh no, the picture is too bad. Sorry, <laughs> there was uh, something happened. Uh, okay, maybe this is <laughs> somebody didn't want me to show this picture, so all the useful information was deleted. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, well, uh, let us just return back. Ooh, this. Yeah, because it's, it's it is not published, so it's a secret. <laughs> so okay, if we draw paths here and, and paths here, so you you, you can see that uh, uh, there are only two types of steps of the paths here, uh, on the uh, pink and on the green uh, tiles. Okay, so basically we'll have paths going like here, and on this side we'll go paths on the blue parts and paths on the red parts. Um, Okay, so, um, so, and this corresponds to tiling of the Aztec diamond uh, by the, the three types of tiles on each side, which I want to show this, but this was really a, a picture. Uh, okay, th this is a simulation provided by Dan uh, uh, It corresponds to the um, Aztec tiling of the Aztec diamond uh, with the two conjugate, uh, with the two diagrams. And here, uh, I wanted to show, okay, I don't have paths, but I still have colors. <clears throat> this is the, uh, the, here is the line, which basically says us where those triangles are. And on the one side are the paths exactly corresponding to three types of tiles, uh, two horizontal tiles and one vertical. And, and another part is, uh, an, uh, corresponds to another, three tiling of uh, other kinds of three tiles. So, well, if this picture would have turned out to be all right, it would be great, but well, let us then just proceed. Okay, uh, but this is an ongoing work because we're still, uh, it, it's still under construction. It was just uh, to show that this tiling of this strange uh, hexagon is basically related uh, to the some interesting problem with the Aztec then. Okay, and, 
I almost don't have much time right now, uh, but uh, really quickly, I would like to say that here's the uh, limit shape uh, obtained from using sampling of the random diagrams. And this small part uh, corresponds uh, to the SO51 and the big young diagram corresponds to a gel 50. So we can see that the small uh, part fits inside the big part. And also mm, one thing, as uh, we are able to see that it's also related to the determinantal point process um, for the GL. Uh, it's the following process here on the line, we'll consider this as the positions of the points. And here we can see determinant, here we can see the weight. And the weight is a binomial coefficient. So this is the Kravchuk polynomial ensemble. But uh, the main theorem that we were able to formulate and that we uh, shown in, in our paper is uh, that um, the following limit theorem uh, as the n goes to infinity and k also with the relation to k and n constant, then the upper boundary of the Young diagram, which is rotated, uh, uh, converges uh, to the supremum norm to this limiting shape, which is parametrized by this uh, limit density. And the limit density is written like that. Well, it, it could be simplified a little bit, but this is the heavy side step function. Um, yeah, and here are the pictures. Uh, the pictures of the most probable diagrams and also the function which were shown on the previous slide, you can see that they quite fit inside these lines. Okay. Uh, so here's again uh, this picture, which is basically, uh, I showed the limit shape, but <clears throat> here I would like to mention the connection with the result of PANOVA. Here we can see that basically our measure could be expressed through the measure on the exterior powers of the PANOVA with the following binomial uh, distribution. So if we have the necessary limit n to k to infinity, then the binomial co distribution concentrates on the one half and basically the limit shapes are the same, except this one half. So this limit shape was already known, but in in connection with the exterior powers. And also the, uh, in the article of Borodin and Alchaski, it was noted that uh, the measure uh, on the exterior power is connected to the Kravchuk ensemble, but also the measure for the whole exterior algebra is turned out to be connected to the Kravchuk ensemble. And also this relations, relation basically shows us that. Uh, and the next step, which we're right now doing, which is in progress, is that we can consider the dual Cauchy identities for GL and GLK, uh, one corresponding to the lambda and lambda prime, and another one corresponding to lambda and lambda bar prime, and introduce uh, the following measure. So well, if we are interested in the principle of specialization, specialization then, uh, then here, the sure functions could be expressed through the Q dimensions. Yeah, and here is a nice also picture, which shows that the limit shape, the initial limit shape corresponding to Q equal to one is here. And then it just tweaks out a little bit, uh, depending on how we do this, uh, 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 Q, how we uh, show that Q goes to one. So when Q goes to one and K and and are constant and then both n and k go to infinity, then this um, uh, uh, q is parameterized by uh, the relation of the b over n. And then depending on the various values of b, we see that these limit shapes, they just depend. But we were, at this point, we were not mm, able uh, to, uh, to do a nicer picture, uh, but now we can uh, using the Prefermion approach. Uh, also, again, uh, this is related to the Kukrovchuk ensemble because one is able to see that this is basically the weight uh, corresponding uh, to the Kukrovchuk ensemble. There is a there is a certain uh, procedure which we can take to see that okay, here we have the determinant and here we have the weights, and the weights of Kukrovchuk polynomials are defined by 
uh, the following expressions. But it's really easy to see uh, that, okay, here, here, this weight corresponds to Kukov chip. And now also we can use the bardino chansky method or we can use the prefermions to see that uh, such limit shapes are shown here. We can, and we are able to derive them uh, using, using these approaches and to obtain the explicit formulas for them. And also for another specialization, we are able to obtain such. See that here they are different because uh, the previous part, is, it was uh, when Q was uh, on, on this part. So in this part, we just have the, uh, how to say this, the straight shapes and they are not going in, the, in this part. But uh, for another specialization, which corresponds to Q and Q to the negative one, we see that the limit shapes in these directions are kind of like going in, into this corner. And this is again a Kukrup chuk ensemble. And here's the limit shape. Okay, so yeah, finally I have the time. Uh, so, what are um, some possible further developments? So of course, we should think of the, the super algebras and also think of quantum groups. So, if these uh, ideas with shapes and also uh, the determinantal point processes is uh, clear. Mm. A simple case uh, for that case, uh, it's unclear yet how to how can we proceed in this uh, direction and also how can we relate it to uh, different tilings and so on. Uh, so uh, also we should prove the convergence and the Q diform case. And also the interesting thing is that if we specialize it uh, X and Ys here in the measure given by the dual Cauchy identities as, as this using with the smooth phi and psi with the, those exponents, then we are now, we are now doing uh, this using the free from approach. So this is work under progress. This is uh, ongoing work with Dan Bitia, Travis Strumshaw and Anton Nazar. So um, yeah, and again, in this approach, what we can do regarding such measure for the other series and what polynomial ensembles to do? It's a lot of questions, and so uh, and a large area for the uh, possible future research. So, thank you for your attention. Questions. I actually have a question. Uh, if uh, Q deform, the formula that you showed, uh, it also has arctangents and stuff like this in it, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, arcos, whatever. Uh, often what happens is that when you Q deform and you put this weight Q to the power of the area under the paths, you can actually relate the Arctic curve of uh, Q equals one to the Arctic curve of, of the Q. And there's a sort of mapping where the variable gets exponentiated and I see exponentials all over the place here. So my first question is, where is Q hidden in B and C in your formula? I don't see Q anymore. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I will show you. Uh, maybe I was just uh, going too fast. Uh, there is, uh, okay, here. Oh, here, okay. Here, Q. Uh, yeah, he, Q goes to one, and this approach uh, is uh, basically uh, parameterized by B. Yeah, so if you use a variable Q to the X instead of X, the question is, is there a mapping from uh, uh, the Q equals one to the, to the generic Q? Because uh, I observed that, uh, and other people observed that, I think uh, Bouffetov, yeah. Gorin also have some... Uh, Result like that? I uh, yeah, I I understand. Well, we we were we didn't do that right now, but okay. we we just kind of because previously we were just able to do it um, numerically, and now we uh, kind of can do it analytically. So okay. if yeah, this mapping, yeah, that is an, th thank you for the suggestion. That is an interesting uh, idea. 
yeah so as again i told there's few cases few cases still uh in pro work in progress yeah but it, definitely there should be something because those oh no those limit shapes they yeah they kind of look that yeah that may that may work <laughs> but uh, well still i cannot say more than that okay. now. thank you uh other questions ah yes Uh, okay, I, I, I didn't quite understand the question. I, I believe the question is how do, do your curves approach the boundary, for instance? Yes. Yeah. Is, it, uh, is there any scaling, special scaling? Uh, okay. Well, right now I can maybe just see it using the picture, but probably. No, probably not. You see the way you approach. Yes. Well, I believe it. It is possible. But uh, yeah, right now we 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 still haven't done. <laughs> But uh, based on the picture, of course, you can see that, uh, yeah, the, that here is a totally different. Uh, yeah, that, that here, the, the, this, the, this is special cases. Like here, the approaching of this line is like here, well, compared to this one, because here it, it, they concentrate around this boundary. No, okay, here, here, they, they never reach this region, they just go here. So here is this, uh, yeah, this corresponds to the infinite value of Q, and here's the value of Q of one. Yeah, but yeah, th thank you again for such a question because uh, th that was well, that was what I was wishing to have here is such obtain such questions because we are coming to this point from the representation theoretic part, and uh, of course I understand that, uh, those kind of questions will arise here and it's very very interesting to hear that so thank you again for such a question i will be working on that too any other question uh, i have a last question um <clears throat> so you showed us that by by picking special uh specializations of uh, of the short functions uh, parameters you could uh, get some different situations in terms of weights uh, to your paths. So is there a way of, of getting periodic weights, for instance? Yeah, uh, yeah, that, 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 that is exactly what uh, we were doing uh, right now. Oh, uh, sorry, I just uh, didn't uh, show it here because there is still no picture. Yeah, uh, that's very good. Basically, we can do it for uh, numerically. Numerically, we can do it for any uh, specialization. Not, not like that and the limit shapes turn out to be very interesting they're not shaped like regular limit shape but for example if we parameterize them by some trigonometric functions then they will be totally totally different. but yes here here it is not a good but still now it's done uh, numerically and for the general values of you we're still working but yeah this is this is possible okay. thank you all right. No more questions. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. And we will start at uh, 45. 45?